Thanks to Usonic for sponsoring this video. So we've been talking about mini LED. It looks great. You get like a thousand dimming zones plus on a really small screen for that awesome HDR experience. But when it comes to gaming, unfortunately the QD OLED just came out and my God, is it ever gorgeous. That being said, I mean one, good luck getting one. And two, it's still expensive. Three, it's really not for creatives. That's where this guy comes in. It's the ViewSonic XG321UG. 32 is obviously for the size. It's a 32 inch display. It's 4K, 144 Hertz. You can do a lot with this display. It's a mix of both creator and gaming. It does cost a bit more than the Alienware at 1300, but it's significantly cheaper than competing mini LED displays, especially something along the lines of like Asus's ProArt at $5,000. For any of you creatives, it can do a ton of different color spaces. I think it's 100% sRGB, 99% Adobe RGB, and then 98% DCI-P3, which is almost the same as the ProArt, except that does a few more color spaces, has Dolby Vision, and gets a little brighter at 1600 nits. However, this guy hits 1400 nits, which is very respective, 1152 dimming zones, which is tons on a screen this size. And then on top of that, it's got G-Sync Ultimate. Like, what else do you even want? I don't even know. Let's open the box. Let's open the box. Oh shit. that could have been bad. So when you're opening this, <laughs> Make sure that you don't open it like that, because otherwise, imagine if this was on a bit of a tilt and I just, you know, kind of popped everything forward like that. So let's not do that. I'm not Linus, I don't drop too much stuff, but you know, accidents happen. Accidents happen. Accidents happen. Oh, let's get this out. <clears throat> this is super heavy. I don't know what's in here. Uh, oh, the stand. Okay, cool. It's got the power brick, external power which means that this whole panel should be a little lighter. Bunch of cables. Oh, here is the, yeah, here is where it is. This is like at least a few pounds. Cool, so this just goes like this, boop. And it's got that nice screw that I'm a big fan of that basically everyone uses. Who didn't use this? Samsung. Samsung, Samsung please switch to this, <laughs> to this screw design. That was a smart I know it was a smart monitor. I don't care. It's no excuse. They should have had the screw. <laughs> but yeah, you basically, you just slot this in. This had two pylons, by the way, which is a little more robust of a stand. But then you just screw it down. Look at that. Easy. You don't need a screwdriver. You don't need nothing. What is nice is that this is actually has some pretty decent little rubber pads on the bottom. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Uh, like I said, this huge power brick. And it's 100 to 240 volts by 4.2A, 50 to 60 hertz, DC output is 16.9A. 330 watts. That's a computer almost. Yeah, that's quite a bit. Boom, power brick. So they've got our handy dandy display port cable. It comes with an A to B cable for plugging your monitor to your computer so that you can use any of the USB ports and have all that data still go to your PC. And I think that's it. Yeah, display port, power, and USB. There's a cable, you forgot a cable. Whoa, 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 whoa. Good job, Hoff. I was wrong, I dropped this. It actually does come with an HDMI cable. They say that this is supposed to be much easier to actually just clip the stand on and pull the whole thing out. And you know what? I, it might actually still be the case. Oh yeah, the whole bottom just pulls right out, no problem. Okay, Ugh, this is a little heavy. Um, this center line is supposed to be rippable. Yeah, look at that, easy peasy. Ooh. Yeah, I love perforated lines. Pop them on. There we go. Boom. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, that was actually pretty nice. That was pretty easy. We've got a few other physical features, like this is a headphone hook for anyone who uses those. It's got this RGB diffusion layer on the back, which I'm so sorry, ViewSonic. I still think it looks just like the Cooler Master logo. Thank you for purchasing a ViewSonic Elite gaming monitor. Yeah, so they're still branding this as a gaming monitor, and I think that it's kind of somewhere in between. It's really a mix of creative and gaming because of all those specs I mentioned earlier. It's pretty thick. Like, this is definitely a beefy display. This is kind of like the Pro Art, actually, how thick it is. It was so close. One thing I really like about this display versus some others is that, sure, there's this huge text on the back, ViewSonic, whatever though, check out the front. There is like no branding on this thing. Let me, uh, okay, it says Elite there. That's whatever, that's fine. But aside from like the G-Sync sticker and this little Elite branding, 
There's no like view Sonic all the way across the bottom. Same with the stand. It just says elite in this bottom right corner here. I would rather have the view Sonic though. It's more professional. Yeah, you're not wrong. I guess if you're a creative, you want it to say view Sonic rather than elite. They are still branding it as a, like a gaming monitor, so I can see why they've got the Elite there for you know the, the Elite gaming experience. One thing that we didn't really mention is this OSD sticker that I peeled off. It's basically just showing us quick access, OSD joystick, and power. So I'm actually gonna feel down here. Yep, okay. So we have a quick access button here, navigation nipple here, which is always preferred. And then there's a power button here. I do love the navigation nipple, but I don't like when that's the only button there. I like when they have a dedicated power button. And then you can take off this little guy here. I hate plastic clip on stuff because I'm always worried that I'm gonna break one of the clips because I've totally broken them. Not frequently, but you know, it does happen. But anyway, you've got a nice cable cover and then you have these little guys here for more cable management. And then our IO consists of, it looks like a barrel plug for the power, headphone jack, HDMI. Oh, you get three HDMI ports, that's not bad. And then we've got a DisplayPort 1.4. And then, uh, what is this? Looks like a way to plug into the board. And then on top of that, we've got our USB-B port to hook up to our PC. Oh, and that's, there's a green dedicated mouse port. And that's kind of neat. And then two other USB-A. The green one's for gaming. Yeah, green is for gaming. One thing that we're missing that a lot of creatives might be looking for is USB-C power delivery. There's no USB-C at all and there's then no power delivery through USB-C because it's not even there. It's not the end of the world. I think that most people do use for a monitor like this, they are gonna use like a dedicated computer, a dedicated tower, but it is handy, especially in a creative studio, to be able to take a laptop with a file on it, walk over and be like, boom, plug in your laptop, show someone whatever you need to show them, walk away. Can't do that with this one, but that's okay because it's significantly cheaper than the competitors. And this one's made for gaming. Yeah, this one's made for gaming. Gamers don't care about plugging in a laptop to it. We kind of forgot to talk about how good the stand is. You got some swivel. Eh, that's not bad. Can it, it can't pivot, but it can tilt. And then I think it's height adjustable too. Yeah, there's actually a lot of height adjustment. Boom. Take that, Apple. It doesn't pivot, but that's okay. Honestly, unless the stand was higher or something, it probably wouldn't even clear the table anyway. And really, are you gonna use a 4K 144 Hertz display? No matter what the rest of it is, are you actually going to use that vertically? Yes. Maybe, some people might, John might, I'm not gonna. Uh, so it's totally okay. And honestly, if you really wanna do that, just put it on a vase amount and do whatever you want at that point. That's pretty much it. Let's turn it on. Let's game on it. I want to see the RGB. We've got some pretty sick RGB on the back here. It helps that blue is my favorite color, but they've got the same problem I had with the last one still. Basically, there is this strip and then they've got these five lights and I really wish it had the same treatment as it does on the back where it's like a really nice solid diffusion layer. I don't know, I understand you're not looking down there, but like I said before, when it shines down on this reflective surface, you can see individual lights instead of like a light strip. It's an incredibly minor detail, but I really would like it, especially if they're already putting some kind of diffusion layer here. Just make the whole thing diffusion. All right, we've got it on our desk. We've got it set to everything we need it to be. It's in 4K, it's running at 144 Hertz or ever so slightly under, 10-bit uh, color, HDR is turned on and yeah i think it looks gorgeous honestly it's super crispy they've got the really good borderless design all the way around the top here with the classic chin on the bottom we think this might be an ambient light sensor but we're not 100 percent sure the bezels are okay i've got the same problem with a lot of monitors where especially in the middle here you've got this big chin give it just like a, a touch more plastic so that this little tiny black bezel on the bottom is fully covered. You can see that near the corners, they've almost got it down there. And I don't know if it's just like a weird curvature thing, but once you get into the middle, you can see it on the bottom. And it's a really minor thing that you stop noticing almost instantly, but it bothers me. The bezel on the outside isn't too bad. It's present, but could be a lot worse. We've got our View Sonic Elite display controller. Jono pointed out that you don't necessarily need the OSD, RGB Alliance. Oh yeah, okay, so if you've got other devices that are all RGB, like I've got a Razer thing and I've got a Logitech thing at my desk and so this would be really great. This will just kind of put them all together. Oh yeah, that's bright. We're still only getting like 48, 50 frames a second because it's cyberpunk and it's running at like ultra or high settings on a 3090 and HDR is turned on and DLSS is on, but this is exactly why I don't own a 4K monitor. It's because it's just way too many pixels for you to try to put out 
like a new AAA game with crazy good settings turned on. Like, yeah, there's others that are better optimized and they still look really good. But like, this game is almost two years old now. Actually it is, it's like two years old now. And it's 4K and it's just, my God, 45 frames per second. But nonetheless, this looks super pretty. Everything's crazy bright. Uh, that sign right there was like blindingly white for just a moment. Mini LED looks great. One thing to note is that even though we're only getting like 42 frames a second, we're not seeing like any tearing or anything like that. Not a bunch of garbage uh, ghosting or trailing or anything. This is thanks to our G-Sync Ultimate module. What that module does is it's basically the normal G-Sync except it's rated at over a thousand nits peak brightness. So because this thing hits like 1400 nits, it's got the nice G-Sync Ultimate. And that alone, the module is usually adding another $100 at least to the price tag of your display. So factor that into the cost at least a little bit when you're thinking about buying this thing. Is it better than G-Sync compatible? It is better than G-Sync compatible. But you know what? We're thinking about doing a video where we're doing G-Sync versus FreeSync versus V-Sync again because we haven't done that in a few years and you know a lot new a lot of new displays are coming out with the new G-Sync modules and stuff. So uh, yeah, you know, get subscribed to LTT so you don't miss that one. We're just watching YouTube footage, you know, if you've got proper like HDR gaming or like if you've got a 4K Blu-ray or something hooked up to this thing, man, this looks good. It's not Dolby Vision, but it's still hitting 1400 nits and peak brightness and like, man, it's pretty. Hoffman worked really hard on making this footage HDR, so we gotta show it. And it looks beautiful. Oh man, that Porsche. I love the color it came in, that like powder blue. Oh, all right, we have to address it again. Yes, QD OLED is out and it is cheaper. The Alienware monitor is like $1,300 versus this is about 2,500. There are some major differences. I mean, the QD OLED is only in 21 by nine aspect ratio, so it's ultra wide, it's curved, it's not 4K, it's 1440p, and if you wanna buy it right now, scalpers are scalping it for like $3,000, which is about what this costs anyway, if not more. And then on top of that, if you do wanna buy it, you gotta wait like at least a couple months. I'm on the waiting list and I don't get mine until like June 20th. Whereas this, you can just buy it right now and it's more creative. Like if you want something that can both game and then do creative work reliably, this is a pretty good option. There you have it. Thanks for watching. This was the ViewSonic XG32 1UG. Yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah. All right, XG32 1UG. Yeah, I hate those naming schemes. Uh, anyway, if you want to watch more short circuits, feel free to watch um, any of our other monitor videos. We've got quite a few of those. Maybe watch Linus with the Samsung G9. But anyway, Thanks for watching.